Okay. I think that fixed it. Um, I think that fixed the the um, the issue. Uh, that kind of sucks because, well, if anything, I can just figure out what to do in terms of posting the the clips. Um, but. You know what's great? I'll just do. I'll just redo the intro. The the, the intro really quickly. Uh, yeah. So I'm Chad. I um. Uh, let me actually put it here so I can redo the intro properly. I'm Chad. I'm a software engineer from Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, streaming to streaming my progress through learning um, Node.js. Ultimately, full stack engineering, but starting with Node.js. Um, so I'm going to go through Andrew Mead's course of, of his complete Node.js course, and I during that during that course I'm going to be t using TypeScript as well. So I'm learning TypeScript on my own um, or offline, I should say. And what I plan to do is to to complete the course um, using TypeScript. And that will help me kind of solidify my TypeScript knowledge while learning Node.js. Um, I'm learning TypeScript again offline. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. And just one quick note, uh, I, I already posted it in the chat. I guess I can post it again. Um, I, I appeared on a podcast recently. Uh, it's called Greater Than Code. And... I would appreciate if you guys took a listen to it. It's pretty much about um, me working with Tech is Hiring, and then we ultimately started talking about like, I, I, I play fighting games and I enjoy them a lot. And what was it? Yeah, I play fighting games, I enjoy them a lot. And yeah, like, actually, let me post it in the chat. There we go. Uh, I play fighting games. And I feel like my journey into playing fighting games has really has really influenced my 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 developer skills. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, one other thing I should I guess I should note I have a stream notes here in the uh, command in the chat that will just give you all this information for people who are watching this. On YouTube uh, this information will be posted in the description um, but yeah that's pretty much it so let's get back into it I will restart the the course um, I will restart the course or not the course just the video from where it was and that's pretty much it Repository which contains all of the uh, let me rewind. VM based off of the contents of package.json and package lock. In this video, as promised, you are going to get a bit of a oh, so the video is I also need to mention this as well as a part of my intro. The video is running at 1.5 times. Um, I feel like uh, Mr. Mead speaks um, slowly enough where I can speed it up that quickly and just kind of run through it. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to run 1.5 times. The entire time I'm I'm going through the course, but I um what you call it? Oh, for now because we I've gone through these sections already. Um, I will I just want to kind of speed it up uh, until we get to a part where I can start writing code. So we can start writing code experience working with an npm package on your own before we get into the challenge though i want to take a quick moment to talk about node modules the directory that npm created this is a generated directory so that means that npm generates it and it's not something we should be manually editing because when we use the npm command again our edits are going to get overwritten you can actually recreate this directory from scratch using npm based off of the contents of package.json and package lock.json so if you were to download a zip for this course, or you were to grab the code from the GitHub repository, which contains all of the course code, you'll notice that the node modules directory is nowhere to be found. 
So let's experiment with this by actually deleting it from our local project. I'm going to remove that folder, and this is exactly what you would see if you grabbed the lecture zip for the last lesson. It's the same files, but with Siri for our After Rules folder for the application code. So if I were to run app.js right now, it would fail. Let's go ahead and error. Cannot find module validator. Clearly, we do need the contents of that node module's run. And words, this is the exact command and package.json to determine which dependencies and which versions our application is using. It's then going to recreate that node files. So you might want to delete it if you were to share the code with a friend, or if you were to add it to your own GitHub repository, we have node modules based off of the contents of our JSON files. Right here, we can see that we still have the validator folder inside of there. After recreating the directory, download the code for this course, make sure to run npm install from inside of the project you're working with before you try to run any of the scripts. And now let's jump into the core of the video, which is going to be a challenge for you. You're going to install, require, and use a brand new npm library. Let's go ahead and talk about which one you're going to use. Yeah, so I did this already. So I'm, I'm not going to do it again. Um, you know, I wonder if it's in my, let me check if it's in the git, in the git log. Uh, just checking really quickly. Uh, install. That was recently. Yeah, as you can see, like July 27th was when I got this course or when I was working on this. And that's the last thing I did. Um, there is a repo for this, for my work in this course. It hasn't been updated. Uh, I will update it. I really should have updated it. I mean, I could push, I should probably should just push to it now while I'm on stream. Um, but what was it that I want to say? Yeah. Like, so, um, there's a Git repo. Um, that will also be for everybody, for people watching this on YouTube, that will also be in the in the in the description as well it's just my work um yeah it's just my work you it'll literally be what i've been what you see me type on in the stream sorry give me a second my eyes itchy um but yeah i believe i might forgot to change the project title merge into master new kids uh part 18 yes yeah, so completed part 17 yeah so we could actually even go into into the history um, of this and you could see my work I'm probably not gonna do that but at least it's there just to say that I actually did not like copy this, steal this from somebody. I guess it doesn't even matter because it's like, I'm, you're actually gonna see me write the code anyway. Man, why is my eye so itchy? Well, yeah, you're gonna see me write the code anyhow. So, but yeah, long story short, I'm not gonna do all of this stuff because I already did it. I'm gonna head over to the NPM search bar. The library you're gonna use is called chalk, like sidewalk chalk. Right here, we can pull up the package. Oh, one quick thing, let me get push. Everything is up to date. Did I actually push this? Wow, I guess I did push this. Okay, I, I'm a liar. <laughs> Everything was up to date. I, I, I pushed this. You can, like, literally, if you go check the, the GitHub right now, it will have all the, the, the TypeScript configuration. Give me one second, my eye is bothering me. Give me one sec.
Uh, I'm back. Uh, let me move all the stuff out of the way so we can get back to it. Page, and you can see that this one is even more popular than the validator package we used before. This one gets 15 million weekly downloads. It is a very popular utility for all sorts of node applications. Now, what exactly does Chalk do? Well, if we scroll down on the package page, we can learn a bit more about it. Chalk is a little utility that allows us to customize how text gets printed with Chalk. Imagine you're creating a web server. You might want to customize how you print logs for your server. Maybe you print errors in red or with a red background, and maybe you print success messages in green while you print warnings in yellow. Using a simple tool oh, like yeah. Chalk, you can create better applications that make it easier for people to figure out what exactly is going on. So it's going to be your job to install it and use it inside of our little app.js script. Over in Visual Studio Code, before we talk about what I'd like you to do, let's remove our console.log call with our call to validator.isurl, and let's also remove that require on line one where we load the validator library in. Now down below, we're going to talk about the challenge for this one, and right here, I have all of the comments that's going to show you how to get this done. So, big picture goal, use the chalk library in your project, and that's going to require you to do a few different things. First up, you're going to have to install it. You want to install version 2.4.1 of chalk. Now, if you forget the command, that's okay. That is the entire point of these challenges. It's to give you experience so you build that muscle memory. You can refer to the previous video to look up that command, or better yet, crack open the PDF guide, as that is a very easy way to scan between lessons and figure out exactly what was covered. It includes code snippets as well as command line commands that we covered in the lesson. Step two, you're going to load chalk chalk in using require just like we did for validator so that could happen up here on going to use the chalk library to print the string success have over other display settings now once you have that done you're going to test your work so you want to run our script after saving it like hey, andrew i bought the course so you could teach me these things comes into play maybe you're saying hey andrew i bought the course so you could teach me these things and well we're going to cover a ton of packages in detail learning exactly how they work and how you can build complex apps with them the goal is to also give you a bit of experience here and there learning how to use new tools on your own and i'll show you once again how to actually solve the challenge afterwards it's important to build up this experience so when you're done with the class you can go off and explore all of the interesting and awesome things that npm has to offer down below there's some examples usages here they are printing some text in blue so you can use this as a starting point point. and if you were to scroll down through the documentation there's a styles section which gives you even more insight onto the various modifiers and colors that are available to you so take some time to really explore the docs and figure out how to solve this challenge when you're done with that you can always use the bonus to experience a bit more of what chalk has to offer use the docs to mess around with other styles such as making the text bold to see in here or inversing the text where the color becomes the background so here that would be green in chalk can be it stuck oh give this your best effort and when you're done come back and click play How'd you do? Let's go ahead and walk through the solution together. Number three, we are installing a new library, so we do indeed list it out. Chalk, like we did in the last video. Then we use the at sign to provide the... I wonder if I should do this. Why not? Let's, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, I've been not writing code this entire time. Is this appearing? Always appear on top. Thank you. I've been wondering why... Why it's been disappearing? It's like, where's my, where's my <laughs> Twitch chat? All right. Um. Let me see. No, we'll do it in Playground. Uh. Mm, let's see. We'll just call it Chalk. Uh. Ts. And then. Const. Well, I guess I'd have to. I don't need to require chop, do I? Uh, con or I don't need to install chop. Const chop equals require. Oh, why is this? Right, go away. Require chop. Okay. Why are you complaining? Oh. That's an interesting thing I've noticed about TypeScript. Like, it will read all the TS files and it will complain if you have the same variable name across the entire project. So, chalk has already been declared here. I don't need it, so I'm gonna delete it. I might end, end up needing it. Actually, I'm gonna leave it there. Um, but, I'm declaring chalk here and it's getting really upset at me. So, uh, chalk child. Yeah. So, I'm going to change the name to chalk child. Um, also, this is technically an implicit any, but I don't know why it's not complete. 
complaining at me. It has something to do with the require, and I just don't know enough about require, about how TS kind of interacts with require to, 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 to understand why it's not complaining. So, um, what you call it? So, like, generally, JavaScript will will get the will 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 get the or not let's let's not even say javascript typescript will get the 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 type from if you assign it to something you will get the type from from that thing right and if you don't uh if you don't assign it something then i'm not sure how that works i think it's still an implicit any but generally like say for instance if I just do, uh, let's see, uh, const test. If I do that, JavaScript, uh, TypeScript is going to complain. Uh, variable tests and implicit implicitly has an any type, right? Um, I guess if I make this a thing, okay. So it's not not specifically require. It's if I assign it immediately, then I don't have to say what it is if i don't assign it i have to give it a a a type um and then it's going to what is it getting solved about now uh must be initialized really is that something with typescript that's really weird i didn't know that that's a thing with typescript um that const must be so if i did this as a let it would to be honest, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like that as a constraint. Um, that they must be initial. I, I mean, you, you, you can't do anything with it if it's, if it's, uh, const. Let me see if that, that might not be a TypeScript thing. That may be a JavaScript thing. Uh, how would I figure that out? Um, let's just make a JS file, test.js, and then try to do the same thing. Const blarg. I'm trying to figure out how to spell blog. Yeah, this is a, a TypeScript thing. Cause I'd like never seen that error before. That's cool. I like that. Thanks TypeScript. Yeah, so you have to assign it something. But yeah, I mean, that's cool. I mean, TypeScript is really there to help you reduce the amount of errors in your JavaScript, right? That's literally what it's there for, is just to apply constraints to, to, to JavaScript and just kind of get, get mad at you when you do something. It might not even be a type. I don't know. I don't know. I'm, let me not say too much because then I'll show how, how silly I am. <laughs> Anyways. Um, node require. Yeah, that's my phone telling us the session is over. So I'm going to give myself, um, I'm going to give myself about 10 minutes because of the technical difficulties that we had earlier. Um, if I can open my phone, I mean, I'm trying to do this sideways, but <laughs> I'm going to give myself about another 10 minutes. I should have eaten. Yeah, I'm already really hungry. <sighs> I did not prepare for the stream. I'm sorry, I got so excited about the podcast coming out today that literally everything I was supposed to do today got derailed. Um, well, outside of the stream, thankfully, but yeah. Uh, add. Uh, okay, cool. So I'm going to give myself 10 minutes. Um, so install that, um, loaded that, use it to print the string success. So we're going to give it const, const, um, uh, chalk string. I 
don't need to do what I'm going to do anyway. Success. Success! <laughs> Smash Brothers. Uh, where is Chalk? So we're going to go look up Chalk in NPM. Uh, Chalk. Not Chod. Okay, cool. So that should do it. Cool. And then I want to print the string require console log chalk blue. So, hmm. okay. So, uh, console dot log. Uh, where is it? Chalk. Oh, chalk chow. Wait, can I? You, no, I I need to require it. Uh, chalk chow. Dot. Not free and green. Yeah, I'm messing with this. And chalk string. Cool. Save. And then something that I was also I did not mention the the last few times, but I believe. Um, watch me look stupid on on stream. But I believe run so TypeScript is is it called TypeScript? It might not be called TypeScript here. It's called TSC. Where's the where's the um, scripts? No, it's called TypeScript. Oh, because I'm not in the course. Okay, that's why. Uh, CD notes app. I'm not in the notes app. Uh, anyways, so npm come on npm run typescript so you can actually i believe you can set where um you can compile only one file and i believe you do that by giving the file um address and so we are going to go to playground chalk.ts and we're going to see how that works. Uh, cool beans. Oh, and it compiles it right there. Okay. And then we'll just run this in node. Node playground. success yeah and so we have successfully completed uh, the challenge and we have done so by writing it in TypeScript um, what I also noticed though oh what's up Jacob what's up man thanks for thanks for stopping in I do not know why that emoji isn't playing <laughs> But uh, thanks, thanks, thank you so much. So we're working on this course. Um, I'm about to take a break. Man, I'm really hungry. Damn. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot to eat. I might just literally go grab grab some something during the break, and then just maybe I might even. Well, I don't want to eat because that's curry. Damn. Yeah, I might just do that. Uh, nah, I, I, I can just, I can just deal with it. I'll just deal with it. If anything, I can stop the stream early. Um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for popping into the stream, man. Um, yeah, like I was saying, we're working on this course, and I was just messing around with this challenge that he had given us. Um, I'm gonna delete this because it's not that serious but um what what did i want to say yeah but what i have noticed is obviously i've just noticed this right now but when we compile 
this, it just, ooh, what is that? Oh, okay, cool, that's a, <coughs> excuse me. But when we compile, we, um, what you call it? We compile this file directly in its location. So it doesn't go to dist if we compile it there. I wonder if there's a way we can change that um, because I do not want this to compile in the same location. I would much rather it compile in dist. But I also don't want to compile everything just to see one file. So I wonder how we can change that. Um, I'll figure that out. I'll figure that out at some point. Yeah, that'll be something to figure out. Anyhow, uh, screw it. Like since since I because actually let's go through this and then so I'm gonna stop the timer and then what we will just do is we will go through this. Oh, hey, there it is. TS fig is likely. Yeah, that's what I figured. So here's here's what the well, let me get rid of this so that it's easier to see. Actually, let me just full screen this. Um because I can just do this, right? Yeah. So this is what my config file looks like right now. And I have a oh oh wow. Okay. So specify a file that bundles what? No, I don't think this is what I want um so right now i have an output directory to to dist right um but it's not outputting a singular file i might let's let's try this right since we're here let's try this and then i'll go on break for a bit um i might do this as well and then we'll see how this reacts I, i'm pretty sure it's not this is not the droids that I'm looking for, <laughs> but I just want to see. Uh, yeah, no, that's not it. So wait, why is it going up? Only MN. Okay, cool. So it errored out. Oh, well, it didn't error out, but uh, wait, why is it still? Anyhow, and then we can just do this. Cool. Yeah, you can continue to be upset, TS config. There's nothing for you to be upset at. There you go. There you go. Calm down, TS config. You silly goose. <laughs> All right. Um. Yeah, there has to be some setting. I might go through TS config a little bit more. Uh, remove comments, true. No emit. Uh, source map. What is source map? Create source map. No. Only outputs that are not JavaScript files. Alright, that's not. Uh, there has to be something. Inline sources. Include source code and source maps. Nope. Nope. Declaration and specifies the output directory. Generate a declaration file. Nope, that is not it. Right, so whatever. Um, I will. We will figure that out later. All right, cool. Anyways, let's finish this, and then we will go on break officially. Um. Which going on break really just means that I am just going to take some time and just get up and walk around. But yeah. 
the version 2.4.1. Now we can go ahead and run that command, which is going to install chalk and all of its dependencies. Once we have that done, we can move on to step two and actually load it in. Now, when it comes to loading it in and using it, this is where the docs come into play. Right here, I can see that I can load it in and use it like so. So let's get that done. Up above on line one, though it could have been below this line, I'm going to create my constant called chalk and I'm going to load in the library by using require. Remember, for NPM packages, we load it in by providing its name inside of the string we pass to require. Now we have access to all of the utilities that chalk exports and we can go ahead and take advantage of them. And in this case, our goal is to print the success message in green. So right here, we're gonna get that done and it all starts with a console dot log call. What are we going to do? I'm going to call another method inside of there that is chalk dot followed by the color. Oh, so this is one of the things you have to discover for yourself. Right here, they used chalk dot blue, but I wanted you to print things in green. If you scroll down, they have even more examples like chalk dot red, which you may have seen is Ooh, chalk, I which is indeed the string. So now, once again, remember the valid way to solve the challenge message green, and then I could have passed green mess. Now let's go ahead and test our work. I'm going to save code space not defined. So here I have a small typo. Clearly, I meant to reference the green message variable. So all I need to do is replace MSH with M after recording and gone back and refilmed it, pretending to be perfect. But that's not the point. The point is to actually solve problems and work through all my errors in full name. And here I am indeed getting my step in all that. The goal was to, to the example documentation. You can talk dot blue dot BG red dot bold to create text that's bold on a red background where the text itself is blue. Green text. Green first, then bold. Let's prove it. I'm going to rerun things. The program works and we do get our bold green text. Now let's remove bold and one of the extra dots and put it after green. So here I'm going to call chalk.green.bold calling bold as a method. If we call bold as a method and rerun the script, we get the exact same result. So here we can chain together exactly what we need to create any sort of styling we want in verse. If you'll note, use underline there and down below, but there's no, we can actually, we can see all of these style modifiers and all of the colors available to us. Right here, there's another option called inverse. Let's go ahead and actually use it just to see what happens. Now, once again, I could, so, all this is going to do is make the green color the background, and if I run the script, that's exactly what we get. So there we go. We have complete and we APIs, real-time apps, and more. PM right. Cool beans. In this video, you're going to learn how to install and work with global NPM packages. These are. All right. So um, let me go back. Let me bring back up OBS so that I can do this. So that I can. <laughs> All right, um, and the break starts now. Start the break, right? Let me bring this up. Uh, yeah, so I am just taking a moment to get up and stretch. Uh, I do this every stream. Um, generally, before I would do this after 50 minutes. And so, yeah, I'll just do this after 50 minutes, but now I am going to do this for, um, sorry, I would work for 50 minutes and then I would rest for 10. Uh, I've decided to do a regular Pomodoro, which is work for 25 minutes and then rest for five minutes. And so obviously that will be more, um, I guess more breaks because it'll be obviously it'll be three breaks instead of just one um, and it will be more break time because it will be technically 30 minutes 30 minutes it will be 50 minutes of breaking because you technically don't have to take a break for the last one um, but yeah that's pretty much the idea um, so I'm just moving around and stuff I I've literally decided I'm gonna make a screen for this for, for whenever I'm doing this like stretch break uh, mainly because it's kind of weird like I should just put something up because I always have to kind of talk about it but and take off my glasses um, yeah like I'm actually seriously think well I already made a decision that I'm not gonna eat I'm probably just going to do one more Pomodoro and call it a day uh, I don't want to, but I'm really hungry and I'm going to work out afterwards and I never do well um, working out, um, doing any form of like weightlifting or just strenuous exercises when I haven't eaten and I get headaches if I don't eat, so I'm not going to play around with that. Anyhow, uh, just chilling out. So what is it? What, 
probably another minute and a half, not probably, in another minute and a half, the break will end and then we'll just kind of continue. I guess we won't be able to, which makes me a double liar, but it won't make, I won't be able to get through um, the rest of the section today, um, which that's fine. You know, it's not about, it, it's not a race. I'm not racing against anybody. It's just about learning. You know, it's about getting, getting, getting the learning done. You know what I mean? Doing the work. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Ah, oh, man. So how's things been, Jacob? How, how's things over there? Oh. Man, I'm, I'm tired. Why am I always tired around this time? Well, I did get up really early. Yeah, so I'd be a little bit frazzled by this time, I guess. Which sucks. But, oh, whatever. What can you do? Yep. Uh, pretty good. Just working and getting things done. Yep. Yep. Thus, you know, that's all you can do nowadays, right? Even though things are kind of moving back to normal, you still have to be like fairly careful, you know, like Delta is really crazy. This COVID thing is really crazy. So it's all you can really do, you know, just stay safe. But yeah, that's good. <sighs> Sorry. Man, I really need to do something about the sleepiness yeah 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 pretty much yeah unfortunate we should have like a big celebration when we can go back to like some semblance of normal like a big well i guess technically well yeah we can have we should have like a big celebration like a like a big party like a back to normal party it's you know young kids i understand the lack of sleep <laughs> yeah i don't know man i don't know i'm usually a pretty good sleeper like within the last couple of days Da -dang! The the last couple of days, I've just not been getting the best sleep. Like the last couple of days, I would go to sleep regularly, like when I would usually go to sleep, and then I would wake up around what was it? I would wake up around like three or four, and then I have to go back to sleep, and it would just fuck up my sleep cycle, man. Like and i i i mean i can get through the day but i i just it doesn't feel good it doesn't feel good at all <sighs> all right well that's the break <sighs> my god god damn it i'm not liking the fact that i'm tired all right so unfortunately we will just go through one more pomodoro and then we'll call it for the day so I can go get something to eat. Um, man, technical difficulties, man. I don't know why I've been having these technical difficulties. Like, I, this, is, this is the second stream in a row where there's technical difficulties. And I was hoping that everything was sorted out. I mean, granted, the te technical difficulties weren't that serious. It was just scratching. But I just didn't want to have the audio scratching. Like especially for like an hour or two hours and then of course i forget to eat so i'm just a little bit more drained that's probably the reason why i'm i'm as sleepy as i am i just don't have any energy because like i'm i literally feel really hungry anyhow uh start work so uh, we'll just continue with this in this video, you're going to learn how to install and work with global NPM packages. These are going to allow us to get a new command we can execute from the terminal. So far, all of the packages we've worked with are known as locally installed packages. That's when we install the dependency explicitly into our project, like we've done with Validator and Chalk in the Notes app project. You can tell it's a local dependency because it's listed in package.json like our two dependencies are. 
Now, local NPM modules, those get loaded into your project code with require, like we've seen with chalk and validator. When we install a module globally, we actually don't load it in directly to our source files. Instead, we install it globally and it gives us access to a new command we can use from the terminal. Now, in the case of this video, we're going to install a NPM module globally that is a really nice utility for working with Node because it's going to allow us to run our application and automatically restart the app whenever the app code changes. So I can make a change up above and save the file and we'll immediately see the results down below. So we won't have to constantly switch to the terminal and rerun the same command over and over again. We can find the package we're going to install by heading over to npmjs.com and going up to that search bar once again. Right here, the package we're going to use is called Nodemon. That is N-O-D-E-M-O-N. Right here, the first result is the package we're looking for. So I have an interesting question to this stream or uh, to everybody. Like, uh, do you do you pronounce it Nodemon or do you pronounce it No Demon? Or, well, I pronounce it No Demon for whatever reason. But do you pronounce it Nodemon or No Demon? Like, I feel like this is, I feel like this is this is a really good Twitch topic, a Twitch, uh, Twitter topic. Uh, option A, Nodemon. Man, so I'm I'm the I'm the only Satanist here. <laughs> well, anti-Satanist, I guess, because I don't want any demons. <laughs> no demons, no demons whatsoever. No demons. <laughs> but. No, it's just because the, 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 it's like I heard Nodemon and I was just like, what the hell is Nodemon? And I was like, oh, you mean no deep? Uh, uh, no demon? No demon? No demon? But now I'm like literally questioning, you know, my sanity. It's like, I, I, should I be saying no? I mean, this is this is the same question as, as SQL and SQL, right? Like, there's some people say SQL, some people say SQL. And they, they both are fighting to the bitter end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it happens with all these packages. They should have, like, the pronunciation. But then it's the same thing as GIF and JIF, right? Like, the, <laughs> there's there's the, the, the guy who, um, who, who, who invented uh, GIF, or GIF, I say GIF, uh, who invented GIF like says it's pronounced jiff and then i think um people who 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 study english say he's crazy it's pronounced it's pronounced gif and it's just like i it's just not gonna end right like at this point because i don't know people people just want to 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 to, to be assholes so they're like you're pronouncing it wrong you know what i mean <laughs> code names are running out so everything is becoming more uh, uh, I have no idea how to pronounce this. Um, I don't think I've ever pronounced that word. I've seen it, obviously. Um, electric, electric. Let's go with. Let's go with that. Or using. Um, or using other languages than English. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool names. I, th I thought you said code names. Yeah, cool names are running out. I mean, like, like, tech. Tech has kind of come up with a good way of, of, of solving that. Let me, let me pause the timer because we're talking. <laughs> Eclectic. There we go. I've heard that pronunciation like forever, like a long time ago. Eclectic. Sorry. Sorry. But yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> English is not my first language. It's Patawa. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm stupid. Um, yeah, like <laughs> it is metal. <laughs> no, but um, like I feel like I feel like tech is coming up with like a good workaround by just making weird ass names, <laughs> like some of the like. Well, I don't want to say Google is a weird name because obviously Google is a, a, a name in the in, is a word in the English language. But like, you really had you had to have been a math, a math nerd to come up with Google. You know what I mean? And like now it doesn't even mean the thing that it meant originally. It's like now to Google something is to search something as opposed to the math term it was originally. Or wait, what was it? It was so it was Google. What is so? Google English, sorry, uh, dictionary. So Google, da, 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 da. 
So I think Google is actually a longer word. But to use Google. So yeah, it's an English dictionary. Um, I don't remember. Google number. Damn it. A oh, Google is an op Yeah, so it is it is literally a Google, okay. A Google, yeah. So a Google is on a one followed by a hundred zeros. That is a big ass number. Um <coughs> excuse me. But um well yeah, I guess you 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 go Google O L and then L E and it's fine. But yeah, like I don't know. Tech comes up with weird ass names. And then those weird ass names becomes the like Twitter. <laughs> it's like the hell is a what the hell is Twitter? You know? Oh, you tweet, you know. Also known as you write a message that's two hundred and forty characters. Originally a hundred and is it two hundred and forty? I don't remember what it is. Well, a hundred and forty characters and then two hundred and eighty characters now twice um but yeah a tweet yeah texas comes up with weird ass things and, and everybody else just accept it uh, accepts it it's just like oh, it's the weird it's the weird kids they're making a million dollars what are you gonna do you know like before you know back in the 90s and like early i think it was mostly in the 90s like for you to to make a tech name you had to attach a word to soft if you didn't attach a word to soft, then then it was not tech. <laughs> like it was something soft, you know, of thus Microsoft, right? It was something soft. Or it was a word and computers, you know. But yeah, we, I guess the, the cool names are running out, but like I said, tech comes up with weird ass names and then they become cool names like the, the only way for your for your thing to become a cool name is for it to, to, to be successfully used <laughs> for for the company to be successful you know Twitter Facebook even though Facebook isn't a verb yet you know we don't Facebook but yeah Twitter um, why can I not think of shit Xerox you know what I mean I think Xerox was the original tech um the original tech name to end up in a dictionary i think right to xerox something it was to to to, to copy something right or to to use the copy machine you, you xerox it well i guess you could say well whatever anyways tech's weird <laughs> all right back to actually doing this work <laughs> for and i'm just showing you where this package lives in case you want to learn more about it it's actually a very easy tool to use so let's just get right to it the first thing we okay so quick note um for for my project because uh, i'm just going to derail this entire stream <laughs> quick note for the, the, the entire project i did not install no um no demon because i'm going to i'm going to own it <laughs> i did not um uh what you call it installed no deem um, no demon um globally i installed it locally i'm not necessarily the biggest fan of having global packages um so i did not install it globally and i do not intend to do so so haha -ha. we have to do is install it now when we're installing a module globally the installation command is basically the same with one slight difference so let's go ahead and get started down below we are going to run a command npm install the module name that's node mon at 1.18. No demon damn it. And this is the exact <laughs> format you'd expect if we were to install the module locally. The only difference is we use the G flag, which is short for global. This is going to install the module globally instead. Now let's go ahead and run this command and see what happens. When the command finishes, we're going to notice that node modules, package lock JSON, and package.json haven't changed in any way whatsoever. When we install a module globally, it is not changing the individual project, it's installing the tool on our operating system itself. So right here, it is going through the process of getting everything set up. Now we're done. And if I open up package.json, what don't we see? We don't see node mon listed as a dependency. No so it's not something we would ever require in our project and then actually try to use. This particular package wasn't designed to be used like that. Instead, what we got access to was a brand new command from the terminal. 
Now, when you install an NPM package globally, things can indeed go wrong. I usually get a ton of questions related to this since everyone's environment is slightly different. If you are running on Linux or Mac and you're getting an error, I recommend putting sudo, that's S-U-D-O, in front of the command to run it as an administrator. So that would be sudo npm install nodemon at 1.18.5 with the G flag. If you're on Windows and you're getting some sort of error, just crack open a question in the course Q&A and I'll work with you to get unstuck and back on track. We can always verify that nodemon was installed correctly Demon. by running nodemon, the package name exactly, followed by... That's, 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 okay. So that's the theme of the stream today. Every time he says no, uh, node mon, I'm saying no demon. Because my way is the correct way, at least on this stream, my way is the correct way to say it, and nobody else's way is correct. <laughs> IVV flatly and back on track. We can always verify that Nodemon was installed no correctly demon. by running Nodemon. I'm, I'm just going to just keep it. If you're on Windows and you're getting some sort of error, just crack open a question in the course Q&A and I'll work with you to get unstuck and back on track. We can always verify that Nodemon was installed correctly by running <laughs> Nodemon, the no package demon. name exactly, followed by the V flag, exactly like we've done with Node and with NPM. When I run it, what do I get? I get a version 1.18.5, the exact one I specified in my installation command. This is Andrew from the future with a quick update. If you're running on Windows and you're... Ooh, he's from the future. Andrew from the future, can you give me the lotto the, the numbers, please, so that I can I, I can win the lotto from the future, please? Thank you, thank you. You know, help a brother out, please, please, please. <laughs> you're using PowerShell as your terminal. The command that we just ran to check the Nodemon version might have failed, so you might be seeing the error that's right up top. When I run Nodemon with the V flag, I get the following error saying that Nodemon cannot be loaded because running scripts is disabled on this system. So if you're running into that, don't worry, there are a couple of fixes. The first thing you could do is use the regular command prompt application instead of using PowerShell. If you'd like to continue using PowerShell, you can work through the four steps down below. So step one, click on the Windows icon and search for PowerShell. Step two, right click PowerShell in the search results and click run as administrator. Once you have it running as an administrator in step three, run set execution policy, setting it equal to unrestricted, the spacing and the capitalization is important. Once you run that command, you should be able to move on to step four and rerun Nodemon with the V flag. No instead demon. of getting the error up above, you should indeed get the version installed. So this is a fix for Windows users using PowerShell. All right, let's jump right back in to the lesson. If you're see Thanks future Andrew. Give me a second, let me go get the, the, this back. Seeing a version, that's great. If you're not, that means once again, something went wrong and you can always crack open a question in the Q&A and we'll work with you to get the global modules working correctly. So we have access to this new Nodemon command, and the question is, how exactly do we use it? Well, let's explore that. First up, I am going to clear the terminal output to make things a bit easier to read, and all we do is we run our script like we would have with Node, but we change the command we're using. So in the past, we used node space app.js to run the script once. With Nodemon, we use nodemon space app.js. So the only thing we've changed is we've swapped out Node for Nodemon. Now, if we run it, we're going to see our script run with a few additional pieces of output. Right here, we can see it's starting Nodemon and it lists the version, as well as some other logs saying that things are getting started. Then we do it. Why is his cursor so big? I just noticed that his cursor is massive. Like his cursor ate all the Wheaties, you know what I mean? <laughs> Indeed, see the two lines that come from our script. Down below, we can see that the program has exited and it's waiting for changes before it restarts. So now Nodemon is up and running and you'll notice it's not bringing us back to the command prompt even though our program has been above. We're gonna change chalk.green over to chalk.red and then I'm gonna change the message from success to error. If I go ahead and save the program. So, down um, where do I have it? Ah, yeah, so, um, I guess I should talk about this a little bit. Uh, where is this? Okay, cool. So for me, I, Can I? Should I? I probably should change that. Uh, um, all right, I'm gonna make a new script real quick. Uh, so just give me one sec. Uh, what should I call it? I'm just gonna call it No Demon. gonna call it no demon and I am going to assume that the same thing that I've been doing with um what is this silly thing called the same thing that I've been doing with uh, TypeScript I have been doing where I can do with no uh, no daemon um, so 
I'm going to go npm run uh, new daemon dash dash. Uh, let's see. Ruby playgrounds. Uh, chalk. Oh, wait. We don't even have a copy of that. All right, cool. So run TypeScript dash dash. chalk.ts and that will do that and then we can do the same oops npm run uh, no daemon dash dash and then the same address except um is that js yes success um so i mean more than likely what we will end up doing is running uh what we will end up doing is just running app.js and putting everything in app.js for this project but i just wanted to make sure i guess so i have so i'm all right let's let's go back here i have no idea what these do I just know that if you if you put them there you can add flags I learned that recently um, I learned that within the last week because of TypeScript so um, the way I was learned I was learned the way I was taught to to install TypeScript why is this here the way I was taught to install TypeScript you know what, let me clear this stop bothering the way I was taught to install TypeScript was to in install TypeScript globally. Like I said, I'm not the biggest fan of installing things globally, so um, I installed it locally, right? And for whatever reason, I could not figure out how to generate a TS config. And then, you know, lo and behold, Slack Overflow. Let me let me pause this. Um, lo and behold, Stack Overflow to the rest. Actually, let me not pause it. Let me just keep it, keep it going. This is a part of work. Uh, lo and behold, Stack Overflow to the rescue. And this guy, this person, says on Stack Overflow, hey, you install this by... Let me go delete this as well. because Actually, let me delete this as well. So I'm, I'm not going to use this again. Uh, hopefully, this won't come up. Where is it? Pseudo RM and then playground. Oh, uh, playground. Uh, ch not Chad. Not. Uh, cool. Go away. Nobody likes you. All right. Right. So, um. Stack Overflow comes and and somebody says, hey, yo, you know, you can run it with the dash dash and then you can you can put the flag there or the flag that you want. So I was just like, OK, cool. And I even wrote that in my 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 TypeScript guide. Oh, you want to use dash dash when you want to, to use a flag. I don't know why it works. I don't know if it's something specific with NPM or with bash I, I i don't know actually need to go look into it um but you know i would i don't know I, something that I'm, i need to look into um because it just kind of bothers me that i'm using a tool and i don't know exactly why it works um bothers me a tad bit just tad just tad bit but yeah um so right anyways long story short uh, I have no daemon uh, uh, um, installed locally and I wrote and I have the script it will just run app.js so if I were to run this it would be um, just npm run uh, so like the yeah, yeah the, the, the dash dash specifically so in this command where is it in this command why does this why do you need to have this dash dash to 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 run flags um i have this strange feeling 
that this video is about to explain this to me because we actually so later on in the course um if you even if you look at my app.js you'll notice um that passes the arguments oh so it, 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 it so it's just how you pass the arguments to the to the application i didn't even know that but let, let, let me go to my thought right so here all right so what we're making here is on is like a kind of a note taking app you don't want npm run no daemon to care about the arguments you want the underlying command ah i see so you don't want npm to okay 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 so you don't want npm to to, to care about the flags you want the, the the package that you're running to care about the flags and the dash dash sends the flags to the package itself okay cool okay cool um but yeah like so we're creating a what you call it what is this stupid thing called a uh, command line application um in the course at the moment yeah yes that's what i that's what i figured okay cool thank you thank you very much because i was completely i just didn't know like when 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 the the, the the no daemon thing came up i was just like i think you can just use dash dash i don't think this is a, a typescript thing i think it's an npm thing um but yeah what you call it uh we're making a inline inline sorry we're making a, a a command line application here and we are we actually accept flags for the command line application right so i'm pretty sure that he's literally going to give the exact explanation or not the exact explanation but he's going to give an explanation to why we have dash dash you know um which i guess all of this comes full circle um thanks hopefully i will actually remember this ex explanation so i will be able to internalize it um granted i am going to be installing a lot of this stuff locally like i said i do not like installing things globally unless i don't want to say unless i need to because obviously you never need i don't want to say you never need to but i just don't like installing things globally for npm i like them just i like my i like the projects to be kind of encapsulated you know what i mean it's like oh these are all the dependencies you need and i just need to worry about it for this project i don't want to be like oh you know um i don't want to be like oh typescript i have typescript um globally installed on my machine yeah like i want i don't want to have like typescript globally installed on my machine and then i start using it and then like i deploy it and i deploy it wrong and no you know well i guess it doesn't matter because the, the typescript is for but like 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 for nah, no daemon is another thing i guess for for dev dependencies it doesn't matter but i don't even want to think about it you know what i mean i don't want to worry about it i like i like keeping things very much encapsulated in their own space you know that's just like a an, a, a thing for me I, I just like keeping everything encapsulated if you want a bit of a if you want a bit of a tangent there are tools to do the same with your node and npm version oh so you can actually have okay cool S uh do you have do you have that because i would love to do that as well to have like specific npm versions in fact it would work really great for the course because the course um uses a specific version of npm and i would literally like to just use that version of npm uh Volta SH. All right, I'm just gonna put this in Google. Oh, actually, yeah, I can just search for Google. It searches for Google in Firefox. All right, so I'm just gonna take this. <laughs> uh, actually, let me go to the. Oh, uh, put that to make the Earl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I figured. Uh, paste and go. Okay, cool. I will try this out. I will. Well, I guess we can't try it out on stream right now. I guess we can. All right, so let's finish the video out because it's going to finish, and then I will spend the remainder of the time. I mean, we're we're almost done. It's five minutes, right? So, in fact, give me one second. Let me use the bathroom because in nature she calls. She's calling. One moment. One minute, please.
back. I have returned. Um, where is where is this? Okay, so by the way, I'm taking that and I'm putting it in my stream notes. Um, I haven't been using my stream notes, even though I have it there. So copy this. Let's go with encapsulate. Encapsulate your node and npm version to a specific package. Okay, cool. So what we are going to do now is we are going to where is it? Where did I put it? Aha, here it is. So cool. Install any and run any JS tool quickly and seamlessly. Volta is built in Rust and ships as a snappy static binary. Man, I feel like I really should be learning Rust. <laughs> like, literally within the last three months, my, my, like, relationship with Rust has gone from, I, I only know it as a language that people use to everybody's talking about it. Like, I swear to God, I need to be learning Rust. Like I'm seriously, serious, I'm seriously considering learning Rust, you know, just because everybody's talking about it, which is probably the worst option, not the worst option, but the worst reason to learn, to, to learn a language. Actually, that's not the, what is this? Yeah. Oh, really? It's funny. So uh, like I'm working with like JavaScript, right? But I wanted to learn a lot of the language. Um, I guess this is putting the cart before the horse, but I wanted to learn another language, like say for instance, something that, because you know, JavaScript, you, 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 you don't like, it's fast, but you know, like compiled languages are faster, right? So I wanted to learn like something like either Java or I really wanted to learn Go because, um, because a lot of people compared Go to C++, and I really like C++, right? So I was just like, I'm probably going to learn Go, but you know, like learning all of this stuff is more important because all of this stuff is the thing that's going to get me a job, right? So, um, um, like a friend of mine, he he came across a company that was interested in hiring him, and they wrote stuff in Rust. And so he's really delved into it, right? And the company ended up not hiring him, but he became like a Rust fanatic, a Rust fanatic. Like he's still been working with it with uh, for the last three months. He really likes it. He really likes it a lot. Like, I don't know if he's been writing a lot of code in it, but he's definitely been messing around with it a lot. And so I'm like, you know, now I'm seeing all of these things and obviously I guess it's that bias, right? So like before Rust was whatever to me, it was just like, oh, it's a programming language that exists and it kind of does this. In fact, I didn't even know too much about it. No, like, because I have an idea of what Rust is, every time I see it, it, it kind of clicks in my mind. It's like, man, Rust, you know, it's, it's cool, you know? So I don't know. We were even having a conversation about it uh, uh, to be fair, I was having a conversation about it because of, again, being exposed to Rust from by this friend. <laughs> I feel like that's a stupid statement. It was like I was exposed to Rust. Should I be worrying? Of, should I be worried about tetanus? <laughs> I was exposed to Rust. <laughs> oh, somebody take him to the hospital. He's gonna get locked jaw. <laughs> Maybe they shouldn't have called it Rust. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, they should have called it Steel. <laughs> Not Rust. Anyways. And then the, 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 the people in the communities called Rust Stations. Just need to worry about crap. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah, we were having a conversation about Rust um, before. 
and yeah, like I don't know. Like I'm I'm seriously considering I'm seriously considering at least playing around with it. I probably should play around with play around with it and, and go. Um I went to like a go meetup and or it wasn't a go meetup, it was like a tutorial for like an hour and it was cool. I don't know, like the, the the problem is like the reason why I mentioned um it's like putting a, the the horse in front of the cart is I'm learning these languages. I would be learning these languages to solve a problem that I don't currently have. I would be learning them in hopes of solving a problem, right? To be fair, I'm really interested in learning Go because of my own personal experience, but effectively I'll be learning them to solve a problem that I currently don't have and may never have and is something that you kind of want to avoid doing. You don't necessarily want to, to do something um, in case a problem comes up like on in is specifically the in case like if you know that a problem is going to come up or you know that if you go down this road thank you phone <laughs> it's just scared the hell out of me Daddy! I'm like what the fuck <laughs> but yeah yeah great is great for CLI man you know what I should probably just take like a day like probably I should probably like take a Sunday or not a Sunday, I should just probably make Sunday like the exploring shit day where we just fuck around with shit like we don't have like a game plan you know, it's just, you know, push buttons I probably should do that because like too many people are saying too many good things about too many things and I'm just like, I can't work on it right now because I'm too busy doing things trying to get me to get me a job work on the core team of... oh really? of www oh oh cool thanks <laughs> uh thanks much let me go put this in there never heard of this place before oh cool tori uh, build fast and secure desktop applications with a web front end. This is interesting. With a web front end. So, like, how does this work? Um, so is the desktop application like built? Uh, is it built? Sorry, is it installed locally on the machine, and then your what you call it, and then the GUI is just a, a web page. Or is the desktop application installed like on a server somewhere, which I guess would make it a server. Like, how does this work? This is really interesting. Maybe I should click the learn more. <laughs> uh, oh, pretty much option A. Okay. Wow, that's really cool. So instead of having like a GUI specifically for the for for the what you call it for the desktop app you built so then i'm i'm assuming you have like some form of api that allows you to yeah the building is a, so, so the bundling is written in rust it it it, uh, it packages up to your html css and js and shows it as a web page okay oh and the la the web page is local to your machine then yeah, I think I kind of like that idea. You know what I mean? That that's pretty cool. It it's I guess it still means that you 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 need you still need a browser, but it's not like nobody has a browser, right? I I can't even imagine a machine that doesn't have a browser. Um, but yeah, like that's pretty cool though, and it it makes it easier for people to to, to like make changes to your front end. Or to, to to your GUI because it's a GUI at this point. It's not a, it's not nest, it's not like a traditional web front end, right? Um, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like it. I like the idea. So, is this like an application that is in this style, or you 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 built a frame, or you or or Tori's building a framework to build applications in this style? Uh, it uses the system web view, which mostly comes on all modern computers oh, okay okay yeah I, I don't know too much about webview i i've seen it like on my phone 
um, being updated, but I never, act. in fact, I am going to add this to notes. See, this is the point of streaming. Um, look into web view. That's pretty cool though. I like it. I really like the idea. So is it off? So is it like a, a application in this style? I, I'd asked this earlier. Is it an application that's in this style or is it just a framework? Uh, to like Chrome. Oh, so like WebView is like pretty much, or pretty much like um, Chromium. So it's like yeah, so it's like Chromium. So it would like have like have V8 for for all the JS stuff, and then the, the rest of the stuff that Chromium needs. Uh, yeah, you're using Tori to make apps. Yeah, that sounds really cool, man. That sounds really cool. You know what? I'm gonna suggest this to the person that I was talking to about um that was that was working with rust he might like this like he is more he is still a web developer but he does a lot of he's a back-end developer he does a lot of stuff in c sharp but like i said he really likes rust so he might be interested in this so i am going to send him that information afterwards uh, but anyways it might be a nice way to play around with a bit ah yeah sure i definitely i don't mind like this is really interesting to me. I really like this idea because I personally, so when I started, I wanted to build desktop applications. Um, I never, I never really liked the web and it's not necessarily that I didn't like the web. I hated wrestling with HTML, CSS. And then I eventually learned about React and then I was just like, I, I tolerate HTML and CSS at this point. <laughs> you know, there's, I don't want to say I tolerate, that's not fair. I, I, I like it, it's okay. You know, but I always kind of want to to, to to do desktop applications. Um, but I moved away from that idea. I moved away from that idea as I kind of invested more in in web apps. You know, um, but I would definitely love to play around with this. I'll I'll definitely give it a shot. Like, I don't know where I'm going to find the time to give it a shot. To be quite honest with you, but I'll definitely give it a shot. But yeah, yeah, I'm actually going to send this to him. Well, I'm going to send this to him after the stream because I don't want to blow his name up. Um, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I like web apps. Web apps are, are, are really cool. And so I want to get into to, to making distributed systems. Um, eventually, I don't know when the fuck that's going to happen. But I, I want to do I want to do that. Like, that's something that that really excites me but i have to work on the fundamentals first and i'm happy that like I'm, I'm having so much fun with typescript and to be honest i have a lot of fun um working with node but i really want to kind of get to that point i get really antsy when i think about it because it's like that's like the thing that's really fun to me you know like that kind of architecting that kind of software architecting um but you know you have to work on the fundamentals first but yeah like i don't know man I don't know. I want to do all the things, all the things. Like every time somebody mentions something about tech in general, it's just interesting to me. <laughs> so I don't know. I have to curb that somehow, but I don't know. One of these days, one of these days, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's just like, it, it's that, that, that thing, right? Like you just, man, this is cool. So you go off and you go learn that. And then it's been like a month and you're just like, shit, I should have been working on this the entire time. <laughs> and you'll never get anything done. But you'll be happy. <laughs> you'll be happy because you'll be working on fun stuff all the time. Um, But yeah, did, did we finish the video? Uh, I probably should finish out the video. Yeah, let me finish out the video um, so that we don't have to worry about this when we come back. Down below, I can see that basically instantly Nodemon or me your could continue to Thank you, by the way, Jacob. Thank you so much for the tangent. I really appreciate it. This is like awesome stuff. Uh did I write this down? Uh I did not write this down. Let me let me grab this as well. I'll just grab the, the first part of the link.
Sure, no problem. No problem. I will let him know about this right after the stream is done. Um, yeah, I'll let him know about it right after the stream is, is finished. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll let, I'll let him know. Um, I'll let you know. I'll let him know who I was talking to so he can hit you up on Twitter. But yeah, no problem. No problem. No problem. By the way, I, 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 I don't say this enough. Thank you very much for being in the stream. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, like, I, I, I learned a lot just talking to you, man. Thank you so much. I think he'll really like this. I think he'll really like this. Because, like, he... I mean, he hasn't been working with Rust a lot because he himself has been distracted by work. But... <laughs> but, yeah. he's He himself has been distracted by work. Um, but I'm pretty sure he'll get back into it as soon as I, I, I show him this, man. Because he's, like... He's all about Rust, man. Like, he was... He just wanted to work with it a lot. So, just, just kind of... You know, I yeah, just probably just kind of giving him this, you know, a new toy to play with, right? Right? Like, I'm pretty sure he'll 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 be all about it. But yeah, let me let me finish out the video so that we don't have to worry about it um, when we come back. To make changes to our program and see those changes instantly reflected, I'll switch this to blue, save the program, and before I'm even done saying I saved it, blue is showing up down below. So throughout this class, I will be using Nodemon, and I also use it with my client projects to make a small change variant in Control C. That's going to terminate the Nodemon process and bring us back to the command prompt where we can do something else, like instead with Nodemon. So the load in core node modules, how to load in your own files, and how to load in NPM modules, and documents, and the file option. I am excited to get to it, so let's go ahead and jump right into the section introduction for the next one. Cool beans. I'm excited to get into it too next time. <laughs> Mr. Mead. Um, I, I guess I should start closing these things out. Uh, actually, let me go to this and no, webcam. And then let me start closing these. Well, I don't want to close that. But thank you so much for taking the time out to watch this. Um, sorry for a little bit of the technical difficulties earlier. And sorry about well not sorry about the tangent i enjoyed the tangent you know if you don't enjoy the tangent you don't have to be here <laughs> please please don't leave please 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 i need friends <laughs> right. um but yeah so we didn't get too too far into the course but we have a lot of other things that we can look into or at least i can look into which is one of the big parts of this whole thing for me so huzzah um so i guess we will con we will continue the next section unfortunately it's still a little bit of catching up not too many um not too many videos it will literally be five videos well four videos because one of them is a minute long beep beep um or buzz buzz uh, <laughs> but yeah thanks night <laughs> um what do they want to say? Yeah, like, so... Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We will continue the next section. So, section four, right? Um, and then, hopefully, we'll... we'll well, hopefully. We'll complete, through, we'll complete the section. And that's really when we get to kind of get into the, the meat and potatoes of the, the, the note app, the, the, the command line app that we're building. And, yeah so that's pretty much it um thank you everybody for watching both on twitch and on youtube thank you very much uh so i have a youtube i don't mention it enough but it's in the top right corner of the screen or top right corner of the banner um i have a youtube channel i post the vods for this stream on the youtube channel uh, uh, after the stream um chad stewart you can just search it in uh, I also want to make videos like uh, just want to make short videos um, yeah I want to make short videos of kind of like stuff that I want to talk about uh, I don't have anything yet but you know eventually get up there um, so 
so again uh i have a podcast i have a podcast not i have a podcast i was on a podcast um recently it just got released uh greater than code let me i think i have it i still have the message up here so i will uh, put that here uh for people who are watching this on youtube i do uh, for people who are watching this on YouTube, I, um, what was it? I, blah, 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 blah. Think, Chad, think. <laughs> for people who are watching this on YouTube, I will post it in the description. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, again, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time. Like, thank you. Special shout out to. To, to Jacob for for all the interesting stuff. I am definitely going to explore the npm the the, the Volta um the Volta um, um program later because I really would at least specifically for this I would really like to have like kind of npm um to use the the the, the version of node that he's using even though like i'd be using we'll figure it out we'll figure it out um but yeah i would really like to use the version of node he's using um so that there isn't any issues even though there likely isn't going to be but yeah uh yeah so i think that's it again thank you very much for watching and you have a good one